I mean, if aliens are the divinities of atheists who went into SETI, then is the technological singularity the rupture of the nerds, the religion <laughs> for geeks, I the, think it is. the church of robotics? It, it is in, in many ways. Uh, and I have to say, it's, it's a very compelling narrative uh, that kind of gives me, all of us, I guess, the, the sense that maybe there is something coming grander than us that will save us, that will give us everlasting life and so on. I mean, in, in many ways, I think Ray Kurzweil is, is almost a Christ-like figure. Um, and uh, that's, that's the very thing that I think we have to be cautious about, because there is that human impulse that we have to want to believe those sorts of things. And the fact that we're science geeks and it's couched in scientific language <clears throat> makes it all the more tempting to believe that it's true, because it actually does have the possibility of being true. It's, it's the only hope we have given that the rest of the claims for immortality are based on superstition and magical thinking and, and a supernatural worldview. The, the advantage the singularity worldview has is that it's based in science. It's grounded in something that has a real possibility of being true. Now, that doesn't make it true, though. So, we have to, we, again, we should just start with the skeptical perspective, the null hypothesis. The claims of the singularitarians are not true until they prove otherwise. And, and that's, that's my only point of view on this whole thing. I, I hope I hope the singularity folks are, are right. I hope it turns out to be the case that our generation is the generation that will achieve uh, these great grand uh, breakthroughs that will lead to, you know, extension of life and that sort of thing. Uh, I just think that because in the history of humanity, everybody who's ever made a claim like that has been wrong, that skepticism is the appropriate position to start off with and and see how it goes well let me see if i can challenge this claim at a couple of levels and see where it takes us so first of all uh people have tried have tried to fly for at least since the time of daedalus and icarus uh and leonardo da vinci had his uh, famous drawings uh <coughs> centuries ago until the wright brothers got it right and then in a very short period of time, from the early 1900s to, to, you know, I think 1928 or so, we had transatlantic or transoceanic flights. And then we had commercial flight in the 30s and 40s and 50s, and, and now it, it's, it's a given. Now it's a, it's a fact of life. So two, 3,000 years of, of, of failure was, you know, uh, overcome by a single success. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's an ancient, I think, Indian or Chinese proverb that says, a single candle, candle can extinguish 10,000 years of darkness. <laughs> right. So isn't that what science is all about? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, so somebody's got to be first. Uh, uh, you know, so the first person to achieve flight then, uh, re then rejects the null hypothesis that flight is not possible. Okay, great. So as soon as the cryonics people bring back a, a frozen dog or whatever, and it's and it's back to what it used to be, it's alive at all. Okay, then then we have a a rejection of the null hypothesis with an actual experimental example. That's all. That's all. I'm I'm all for it. There's nothing wrong with that. And if that's the case, then then I'm right there with you. I'll I'll drop my skepticism. I just think that as difficult as flight is. Uh, what the singularitarians are proposing, achieving what whatever it is they're proposing exactly, let's just take one of achieving a, a, a significant life extension or immortality. I just think that problem is many, many orders of magnitude harder than flight, for example. Yeah, but that's from our perspective today. I mean, if you tell a person from the 6th century about flight, they would consider it perhaps equal because gods were the ones that could fly. Sure. Right, in yeah. ancient and, Greece and, I, and so I, on. I think a reasonable argument is that if we do encounter extraterrestrial intelligences, they're not going to be just like 50 years ahead of us technologically or 100 years ahead of us. They're, they'll be tens of thousands or millions of years ahead of us to the point where they probably will have achieved something like what the singularitarians are proposing. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me that, that that would be the case in the long run. I just... my. My instincts about how science works and the and the growth curves um, uh, is that we're still along. We're generations away. But, but, but believe me, I hope 
Mm -hmm. I'm there. I hope I get to be part of this next generation. My standard line in this on this though is that I'm probably going to just miss it, right? Because I was born in '54. <laughs> so you guys claim that isn't that like the dividing line? If you're born before '55, you're probably not going to make it. If you're born after '55, you have a good chance of making it. I'm right on the astrological cusp, so to speak, uh, and I'm going to be so mad if you guys do this right after I die. I'm going to come back and haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. By the way, let me just position myself here a little bit clearer. I consider myself as a skeptical singularitarian you know uh, as a as an open inquirer uh hence my i have a very strong background in philosophy and and my alias and i'm i thus i very much sympathize with your skeptical predisposition because that's how i feel naturally too that's that's my intuitive reaction to most things um so i wouldn't go as far as claiming that i embrace all the ideas that the community embraces mm -hmm to the extent that they are generally. And yet I'm very hopeful that uh, many of the ideas would come to fruition. And, and one of the things is I'm trying to see if there's any way of uh, finding precursors that show us the direction. And that's why I actually quoted the flight as one of the examples, because you could say, well, listen, uh, there were many precursors about flight. You know, we had actually balloons flying uh, decades before the Wright brothers. Um, we had, you know, the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci, who was a genius in so many different fields and weights together. Uh, so perhaps there were precursors based on which one could deduce that eventually that feat would be accomplished. Uh, just like uh, Tsiolkovsky and, and a number of other people predicted, you know, uh, space flight and, and space machines and even drew drawings about, you know, the first engines and things like that decades before they became reality. So the, the question then is, in my mind, are the precursors that Ray Kurzweil is quoting, things like the law of accelerating returns, Moore's law, the computation, the growth in artificial intelligence uh, as embodied by, say, the Google autonomous self-driving car, smartphone, social media, the rise of the internet, storage, uh, uh, the, 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 the deciphering of the, the human genome, you know, an incredible amount of accomplishments that we have had in so many fields, aren't they kind of showing that direction, at least roughly, and, and perhaps we can argue, because for me it's not so much about the timeline, you see, I don't even know if I will be fortunate enough, I'm a bit younger than you, I mean, probably a lot younger than you, but because you're actually about the edge of my dad. But um, <laughs> but I'm not sure if I'll be lucky enough to take advantage of these, you know, uh, life extension technologies that are expected to come. And Let yet, me for me, it's a philosophical issue. It's not so much about the timeline. It's about the, the substance. Right. Let me ask you something. What is it we're talking about here when you say the singularity or we're going to get there and so forth? What's the there there? What's, what do you mean? Do you mean immortality? Or? Well, we can measure it in so many ways, but one of them would be intelligence explosion. The simplest, shortest way of putting it, as I.J. Good did. So that would mean um, the ability to enhance our cognitive capacities beyond measure. Uh, that would mean the presence of autonomous self-driving cars, smartphones, smart, uh, uh, you know, everything. That would be well, by smart your example, To uh, somebody living in the Middle Ages, say in 600 AD, we, we've already gotten there. This is the singularity. I mean, this, this would be such a startlingly, shockingly different world of so much memory storage and, and, and capacity and power and so forth. Uh, we're here. But because we're here, it doesn't feel like, you know, we're, we've, we've made that breakthrough. I mean, just think about smart cars. Mm -hmm. There's been no single year have the cars made a quantum leap. They've just gotten smarter every single year. It just every year, the, the automakers just add a few more components, and the curve just keeps gr growing ever so slowly. Now, on the, on the, but, but there's not been a huge major breakthrough. Same thing with flight. I mean, all the, the major breakthroughs happened fairly early. By the 1950s, 
the curve had already pretty much topped out such that jets today are in principle no different than they were in the 50s. I They're agree. just more comfortable, they're smarter, more computers, and so on. There's not been a huge breakthrough there. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's more typical of how technologies grow, uh, such that I, I suspect that there's not going to be any given month or day or year where, where we all go, wow, look at that. I think it's just going to be smarter and smarter and smarter year by year. And because of the way our brains are designed, we, we don't notice. We get so used to the way things are within weeks that we're not going to notice what whatever it is you're describing. It's just going to be one more component. Now, the problem with the longevity stuff is that the doubling of the lifespan, for example, in the la over the last century and a half, that's not been the result of intelligent technologies and medicine. That's been more the result of public health, such that the doubling of the lifespan is just really an artif a statistical artifact of getting more people that died in between ages 1 and 10 to not die between ages 1 and 10. So they slide up the scale, and instead of the pyramid being narrow at the top and fat in the bottom, it's just shifting like this, such that more and more people are moving up from decade to decade and living longer. But the upper ceiling is still there. I mean, people in the 19th century lived into the 80s and 90s and 100s. It's just that but not more, too often, more, people are, more people are making it up there. But no one has come close to breaking the upper ceiling of 120 or so. No, there has not been any technologies that I can see that have gotten us closer to breaking that ceiling. I think that's a huge barrier. Like what would come after jet aircraft? How much faster can you go? You can't.